Coming up, I'll let you know how emergency responders are following strict protocol to help reduce exposure to the coronavirus. And in a time of uncertainty and stress, we'll tell you why health experts say it's important to keep a level head. Just ahead of 6.30 now, Caitlin Corbett, Chet Lehman, we're back here on Montana this morning, and we talked about it a little earlier. We're lucky to be in the 30s, which is shocking to say, but temperature-wise, we should be much higher than that. Oh uh, Yeah, we should be in the 50s here mm. in the uh, Bozeman area. That's our average Ugh. temperatures. Uh, we're going to struggle to stay in the 30s. Right now, we're not. We're in the 20s. Uh, the big note out there is some slick roads, and that is a live look on the Bozeman Pass right now. You can't see it because the fog what? is blocking our camera up there, so do be careful if you're heading over the pass uh, either direction. It, the fog will be both ways. If you're going mm. east or west, it's yes. not that localized. It's in both lanes. So, <laughs> that yeah, makes sense. Careful. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Struggling to get into the 30s. Yeah, we're not there. It's all 20s right now, and those temperatures about where we're going to be. We're going to maybe make it up into the mid 30s, so add another 10 degrees to what you're looking at there and that'll be your daytime highs. Uh, again, some the shower should give way in the Bozeman area around the noon hour. Uh, we'll get a little of that sun uh, rolling out. It's just not going to be super warm for today. Snow showers are going to linger a little longer in the mining city. Might make it into the mid 30s uh, today, but uh, not tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we'll have that detail forecast, Caitlin, coming up in 10 minutes. All right, thank you very much, Chet. 630 now. Another case of coronavirus in Gallatin County has now been confirmed. According to the Gallatin City County Health Department, the patient is a man in his 20s who had just returned from Europe on March 12th. He had symptoms and was tested the next day, and those test results came back positive yesterday. That man is in good condition at home. That brings the total number of cases in Montana to 10, and that does include the Montana woman being treated in Maryland. Emergency responders are doing their best to gear up for the coronavirus outbreak, but if you think you've been exposed, your first call shouldn't be 911. MTN's Gabby Krevit reports. As you can see, I am standing outside the Bozeman Fire Department, and that's because access is now restricted strictly to responders. And this is one of the many steps that the Bozeman Fire Department is taking to help reduce exposure to coronavirus. So if you can check in with your primary care doctor, that's ultimately where we'd like you to start if you have flu-like symptoms at this time. That's Bozeman Fire's advice for those who think they're experiencing coronavirus symptoms. But unless symptoms are severe, they want you to think twice before calling 911. This is one of many steps taken used to reduce exposure to coronavirus to responders, clinics, and hospitals. But no matter what, they will respond to your call and have an established protocol for protection. If we get on scene and we suspect coronavirus could be the case, we're going to immediately put a face mask on the patient if we need to be in contact with them. And we're also going to limit the number of people that we send into the residence. Emergency responders also have their own masks, gloves, protective eyewear, and gowns if they believe they will be interacting with somebody who may have coronavirus. But the goal is to limit exposure from the start. It's taking us out of the loop of putting ambulances out on the street to transport you to the hospital. And ultimately right now, we're trying to refrain from transporting those with flu-like symptoms unless you have respiratory or cardiac distress. I'm told by the Bozeman Fire Department that they are sticking strictly to emergency response only. That means the cancellation of public education courses as well as outside training. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Krevit, MTN News. So on a continued note, most events and gatherings in the area are shut down because of coronavirus concerns. The City of Bozeman Library and Recreation Departments are closed and the programs that go along with them. All non-essential public meetings also canceled. The Museum of the Rockies closed through March 31st. MSU campuses, though, will remain open and operational for students. This includes residence halls, the dining services, computer labs, and most other campus services. Regal Cinemas at the Gallatin Valley Mall is now closed until further notice. And in the city of Belgrade, they also announced yesterday all events scheduled in city facilities are canceled for six weeks. The Belgrade Library will be announcing its own closure schedule as well. All city services remain fully staffed and operational. On our website, you can, of course, find resources you might need. You can find a state phone information number. There's also a state health website, and Gallatin County now has a call center staffed by Gallatin City County Health Department folks. The health department wants you to go to the Centers for Disease Control website first, and if you cannot find the answers that you're looking for there, just give them a call. 
634 now, Montana's two U.S. Senators spoke to MTN News about upcoming votes and actions to address the coronavirus outbreak and its impacts on the economy. Republican Senator Steve Daines said the House passed bill that includes money for public health and safety net components will be on the Senate floor this week. Dane said he'll be supporting it, but that the next phase, a separate bill, will be a massive economic stimulus package. That bill will likely come next week, he said, and could direct payments to Montanans, as well as assistance for smaller businesses and airlines, as well as unemployment insurance. Democratic Senator John Tester said the Senate should vote now on the House bill and then consider the big economic package separately. He said the priority should be taking steps to get the virus under control. Dane said Republicans want to examine the House bill on the floor this week, but are committed to getting both measures passed as soon as possible. What I think we need to do in Congress as we look at the, the coronavirus threat is we need to move fast, we need to do it right, and we need to be bold. Uh, these are unprecedented times, and it is important that Congress acts quickly. We need to make sure we deal with the virus first, and the economy second. There are a lot of economic problems that are out there. There's no doubt about that. A lot of small business and working families that are in tough shape. But the bottom line is if we don't get our arms around this virus to a point where it's predictable, uh, the economy is never going to settle down. Senate Majority Leader says the Senate will pass the bill and take up a phase two for the coronavirus stimulus bill. In other health-related news, Montana's Motor Vehicle Division changing its policies to address coronavirus concerns. Attorney General Tim Fox says the MVD is suspending all non-commercial driving tests for 30 days. They're limiting the number of people in waiting areas at MVD offices as well. Fox said he's also working with the governor's office on a possible executive order to give an extension to drivers whose licenses are set to expire in March, April and May. It's not yet clear what the coronavirus concerns will mean for the October Real ID deadline. Senator Steve Daines has been asking the federal government to give Montana another extension. Living in the time of the coronavirus can be overwhelming. Anxieties can run high, so we spoke with a mental health specialist to see what they recommend. MTN's Marin Sue tells us why keeping a level head at this time is so important. Keeping a regular routine will be helpful. Get up the same time every day, go to bed the same time each night if your work allows that or if your personal life allows that. Try to keep as much of that routine schedule as you can with all the chaos going on. This is one of many suggestions child psychiatrist Todd Rutherford suggests during this difficult time as coronavirus continues to spread. He says lots of people are experiencing anxiety surrounding this. He explains this comes from the unknown about this virus. Here we are in a situation where it's uncharted territory and there's a lot of things we can't control right now. Um, there's uncertainty about our safety, which is kind of a, anxiety is a natural response to feeling unsafe. Rutherford says anxiety to a degree is normal in situations like this. However, it becomes an issue when anxiety presents a person from performing normal activities like eating or sleeping. Rutherford has suggestions on how you can explain coronavirus to your young children, and he says personalizing it is the best way. Maybe you can explain what a, what a virus is, start with the basic facts, and we can get sick, and that's how we get the flu, and this is... A little bit like the flu, but maybe a little more severe. Um, and so we're just taking every precaution that we can. That's why we're out of school. And that's maybe why we don't go visit grandma and grandpa right now. Rutherford also advocates for unwinding and unplugging. He says take advantage of Montana's outdoors and talk about things other than the virus. In Kalispell, Marin Sue, MTN News. The CDC, of course, still recommends you wash your hands vigorously for 20 seconds and maintain social distancing to prevent any germs from spreading. 638 now, a growing number of school districts around the country are shutting down in response to coronavirus. When talking to your kids about why that's happening, experts say you shouldn't try to scare them. Talk about it in a way that they can understand. Most of us have never really experienced an illness that's so transmissible, that is so contagious, that really could overwhelm our health system. I'm not going to talk about that with a little kid, but I will let them understand that we really want to try hard to make sure not everyone gets sick all at the same time and that we can really try to reduce that. And with teenagers, Dr. Len Bufka says you can talk more about the greater implications of the virus spreading. She also has some recommendations for what to avoid in conversations. First, you shouldn't promise anything. You can't promise that family members and loved ones won't get sick, but you can say you'll do everything you can to keep them healthy. 
Second, don't minimize the concerns. Instead, just try to understand where they're coming from and be open about it. And finally, don't give up on all of your routines. So that means things like bedtimes should stay the same. All of us do a little bit better when we have a regular routine that we follow. And sticking with that routine helps to maintain normalcy in times when things feel a little overwhelming. And Dr. Bufka says parents should also check what kids already know about the coronavirus to make sure that it is accurate. 639 now we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back on Montana this morning, trying to boost the economy in times of crisis, we'll tell you what the government has in store. That's next, and here's what's coming up on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. The coronavirus is dramatically changing our lives. We'll talk to people across the country about what it's like dealing with the new normal. Plus, hear from doctors and nurses. They're worried that they may not have the resources to fight the disease. Why they're concerned now they could pass it on to family and friends. And we speak with Facebook Chief Operating Officer, that's Cheryl Sandberg, how they're trying to stop the spread of coronavirus misinformation and their plan to help struggling small businesses. And Anthony talks to John Legend what John is doing to make us all feel a little better. It's good. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on The Dot.